serious, it's fun, it's your Catholic Drive Time. With Joe McLean and Emily Alcaraz. Joining us right now, Brendan Hodge from The Pillar is on the program to talk about his article, The Pandemic and the Collection Plate. We'll be linking to it, of course. Good morning to you, Brendan. Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you. Yeah, praise be to God, Christ is risen. Now, uh, this is a very interesting article. It seems it's one of the uh, sort of the fallout of the pandemic for sure that the collection plate has taken a massive hit. Tell us about the article that you've written. Yeah, so our goal here was to do some data journalism on a question which a, a lot of people have been interested about, which is what is the effect of the pandemic on the church, but we didn't really have hard data on. Uh, I think people who work in parish life had understood this had had a significant impact. And then also there had been some talk from outside the church. So the Associated Press had run a couple of pieces which were so critical you could almost define them as hit pieces, which were complaining that Catholic parishes had taken a lot of loans from the Paycheck Protection Program, and that the total of those loans was about $1.5 billion. And so they'd sort of run this Catholic church, despite huge resources, takes $1.5 billion from Paycheck Protection Program piece. And we wanted to understand, I mean, parishes are thousands of individual organizations all over the country. They have employees, they receive income from donations every week. What was the real effect rather than just kind of running a, a, a big high level scare piece? And how did you go about uh, collecting the data? Where, was, where were the sources? So the data was kind of hiding in plain sight. Uh, if you've been to parishes uh, and you pick up the Sunday bulletin, you'll see that in most parishes, they put a statement of the parish collections in the bulletin each week. And a lot of parishes these days post their bulletins online on their website. Uh, some just have the last couple bulletins, but a lot have a significant archive. So what we did is we put together a team and we downloaded bulletins from parishes we looked for parishes that had at least two years worth of bulletins so that we could look at full data for 2019 versus 2020. And we collected data from 100 parishes in 10 different dioceses around the country so we could get a representative sample of how things have gone all the way across the country in big parishes and small parishes. How did you, uh, what was, how did you choose the 10 dioceses that you did choose? What was the motivating factor behind that? So we really had two things. One is we wanted to cover very different types of dioceses. We wanted some rural dioceses and big city dioceses. We wanted dioceses in all parts of the country. And then we also specifically wanted dioceses that represented uh, aspects of the COVID pandemic, which had been in the news a lot. So we did include the New York Archdiocese, which of course New York was famously sort of the original ground zero. We also included a pair of dioceses because in terms of numbers of parishes, they were kind of small. So we included the Sioux Falls and Fargo dioceses from North and South Dakota. Those dioceses are right next to each other. They're fairly rural. And although it didn't make the news as much in terms of deaths per population, uh, North and South Dakota were hit very hard by the pandemic, though it was mostly in the summer and fall. So that was an area which had not been covered as much as in the news. We knew it had been hit very hard by the pandemic, but it's a very different sort of area. So we wanted to understand that. And then we just tried to cover the country as a whole. So we included Seattle, Chicago, uh, Orange County, California, uh, San Antonio, New Orleans, um, Miami, uh, the uh, couple of dioceses up in uh, New Hampshire, at Vermont and Maine, uh, and then uh, Columbus, Ohio, kind of right there in the, the middle of things. Now, Brendan, so you did note that while a lot of people were not able to give as much because of unemployment, some people stepped up and gave even more uh, in the collection plate. Do you think that this prevented the situation from being as bad as it could have been? I think it really did. And one of the things that surprised us is we expected this, honestly, to come back far worse than it was. So the, the overall results that we found were that uh, if across all of our parishes, we uh, ran from our, our smallest parish was uh, about $30,000 in collections in 2019. It was part of a parish cluster that shared a parish with uh was shared a priest with several other parishes, and the largest parish had collections of nearly $3 million, so a really big parish in the Seattle area. So we had a, a huge range. Um, across all of those parishes, we found the collections dropped about 12% in 2020 versus 2019. 
And that was pretty consistent. 85% of parishes saw collections go down, but 15% actually saw collections go up. And uh, one, one of our, our, our diocese clusters, North and South Dakota, actually that set of 10 parishes on average was up about 3% versus the prior year. So there was a lot of variation. And one thing that really surprised us is that it didn't necessarily tie COVID. New York was not the worst diocese. Uh, one of our parishes that was up 16% year over year was actually the hardest hit. It was in the hardest hit county that we looked at in terms of deaths per population. It was a parish in the Fargo Diocese. Uh, they saw almost 4,000 deaths per million people, which is, is the worst of any county that we looked at. And they were up 16% year over year in collections. So there was there was some correlation to things like unemployment, uh, but there was actually no correlation to how bad the pandemic was in the county. And I think part of what we see here is a testament to the fact that a lot of Catholics were very concerned to make sure that the work of their parish was continuing. And so one of the things that we heard as we did interviews to follow up with individual parishes is that in many cases, parishioners would come to them and say, I want to make sure that the work of the parish is not interrupted. I, I want to step up and, and cover for the people who maybe are not able to give right now. I know there were reports of also dramatic declines in in donations to um, other issues like Peter's Pence and Capital Campaign for Human Development. And some of that may be related to some of the scandals in, that those are embroiled with. But I, I'm, I, I know that overall donations are down and as well as attendance. And I know there's a big uh, there's a big like hold your breath. Will people return to mass once things begin to regulate and the pandemic slows and eases and restrictions are lifted and people are allowed to go back? How did your report see that see that tied into? Uh, is there any projection here? Do you see uh, that these things are, are tied together and how they might fare in the future? So that's a really good question. Um, obviously, some things are really hard to measure from a distance, like mass attendance and, and what people's intentions are in terms of going back. I know that I've seen some polling data where uh, a lot of people say that they are uh, eager to become more involved in their parishes and, and to attend Catholic churches more once things go back to normal. But what people say their intentions are and what they actually do can be hard to tease apart. And polling data with Catholics is notoriously flaky i mean when you when you do polling on just basic doctrinal beliefs uh, what people believe is not necessarily in line with what the catholic church teaches I, I guess what i would say from kind of an objective point of view with this data that we looked at is that it shows that the effects of the pandemic are very much ongoing uh, the trend that we saw was that normally in a catholic parish you have kind of two high points during the year one is the new year's christmas period so the very beginning and ending of the year and one is around easter so for a typical parish you'd see a, a six to eight week lift which is during uh the latter part of lent easter and then the sort of period right after easter and you'd see a significant increase in donations as often their highest point in the year in terms of their collections and in 2020, on average, Easter was actually the single worst week out of the year. So rather than having that increase that they normally had, they had sort of an inverse shape where it dipped for six to eight weeks. And if we think back, I mean, the lockdowns started in uh, the week of March 15th, and uh, they were kind of at their most severe during that Easter periods. And I think a lot of parishes were adjusting. One thing we noticed we noticed anecdotally as we were going through these bulletins is a lot of posts about, we now have electronic giving available. Please sign up for electronic giving. You could drop your envelopes at the parish office. So parishes were clearly scrambling. And then we, we kind of reached a level off period. So about four weeks after Easter, things settled out to about 13% below the prior year, and they continued on trend. And so, for instance, at the end of the year, donations did lift as they normally do heading into the Christmas period, but they were lifting at a, a rate that was, was still running 13% below the prior year. And even now, as, as we exited the year and we did a sample on a couple of parishes here at the beginning of the year, they're still running 12 Hold that thought, Brandon. I'm so sorry. We'll be right back after this very short break. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to Catholic Drive Time, keeping you informed and inspired. I'm your host, Joe McLean. It's so good to be on with you. Sorry about uh, that. We have a little technical glitch. They were supposed to go to break. And At any rate, we're right back. Brendan Hodge is our guest. Uh, the Pillar is uh, his organization. And the article that we're discussing today is the pandemic and the collection plate, uh, the, the massive hit that parishes took last year during during the height of the pandemic, for sure. And I'm looking at this chart, Brendan, that you have in your article. We're linking to the article, by the way, so that you can find it. And where do we link to it? Generally speaking, a great place to find that is on our live video feed on Facebook. You can find it there, of course. We're also, uh, I think we might be posting links on YouTube as well. Search for Catholic Drive Time. Search for the Guadalupe Radio Network. Even the Station of the Cross, we're, we're streaming live there as well. At any rate, there's a chart here that sort of tracks 2019 and 2020. 19 is a red line, 20 is the blue line, and you can see that uh, Brendan was saying before the break uh, that the, the Easter giving was like the major time of the year, and it totally, 2020, there was like, it totally cut it out completely. Uh, I mean, it, it, it not only didn't happen, it actually took a major hit, and then when it did rise back, it rose only to what we might consider something more normal even though that is less as well. So it was a pretty significant hit. Uh, are parishes able to recover from this loss, Brendan Hodge? So that's a really good question. A lot of parishes are looking at their staff and their programs and what they're doing. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to understand in context is a lot of dioceses encourage their parishes to apply for loans from the Paycheck Protection Program back in the spring. Um, and this is something that the Associated Press ran a couple articles on that were very critical, kind of saying, oh, you know, the Catholic Church is so rich. They own St. Peter's. They own the Sistine Chapel. How can they? <laughs> they own cemeteries that have big uh, endowments. Why aren't they taking money from there? Well, parishes, of course, are independent entities. Um, and the church sees each of these as a, a single community that's responsible for covering its own expenses. And so for a parish, if their donations go down, they would see staff laid off. So one thing that we did think was kind of interesting is the Associated Press had talked about uh, the total paycheck protection loans taken by the Catholic organizations being 1.5 billion. If you take the 100 parishes that we looked at, uh, the average parish had uh, annual donations of about $600,000. They saw their do donations go down by $70,000 in 2020. If you extend that out, there are 17,000 parishes in the U.S. That would be $1.2 billion. So I think for this year, parishes probably squeaked through. Uh, some, some were not able to cover it. But on average, uh, parishes were probably covered this year. But a lot is going to depend on whether people come back to church and are able to continue to support the church in the way that they did before. Otherwise, there are going to be parishes in some areas which are looking at cutting lay staff, cutting programs, or not being able to do basic maintenance. Now, Brendan, you pointed out in your article that uh, parishes generally responded in two different ways to the pandemic. Um, can you explain what those two ways were? And were the, was there any correlation between the two responses from parishes and their collection plate amount? So one of the things that we did is we talked to a, a consultant who does work with parishes on things like capital campaigns. And he, he did describe kind of two different patterns that some parishes followed. One was uh, sort of the weighted out approach. And so this was some parishes uh, took the approach of sort of, well, the bishop has told us to lock down. Uh, we'll see you guys whenever things turn back on. And they kind of went dark. Hmm. Uh, and other parishes really threw themselves hard into trying to continue to support the Catholics in the parish. Uh, they, they would do uh, live stream video masses. They had parking lot masses. They invited people to come to outdoor confession and distribute communion outdoors to those who couldn't come to an outdoor mass. They did everything that they possibly could to keep people involved in the sacramental life of the parish and remain connected to them. Now, that, that sort of thing is very hard to measure from a data point of view just from looking at the bulletin. So one of the things that restricted us is uh, we, we had a, a team of people who were sitting there pulling up PDFs and typing in numbers. And so we were doing this in a very metrics-driven kind of way. We can't measure which parishes were doing that and which weren't. But we did see that even in the hardest hit areas, you had parishes that did very well. And even in areas where there was not that much unemployment, the pandemic was not that bad, there were parishes that just dropped like crazy. 
So I, I think we are seeing a sense in which some parishes had a much closer and more supportive relationship with their people than others than others did. And I have to think that part of what's going on there is this uh, um, sort of keep warm and well fed uh, approach versus the uh, we are here with you approach. Now, earlier you talked about uh, a parish that actually had an increase during this time. Now, let's talk about that again. So do you know why that particular parish was increased, even though everybody, all these other parishes were losing money? They were gaining money. Why why do you think that was? So we we did see out of our sample of 100, 15 parishes saw increases during the pandemic. Wow, uh, and one whole diocese on average was up, or a pair of dioceses, uh, the Fargo and Sioux Falls dioceses. Uh, the there are two things that, from a data point of view, you could use to predict which parishes were up. So, if you look at the parishes that uh, saw an increase in collections during the pandemic, those parishes they started out uh, looking from an employment point of view the same as parishes that did badly, but their unemployment did not get as bad. So they went up from 4% unemployment, which is what the country as a whole was at before the pandemic, to 12%. And then they dropped pretty quickly. So by June, they were down at 9%. By August, they were at 7 And so they recovered faster. If you look at the parishes that did, that did see a reduction in collections, they spiked up to 15% unemployment. And by September, they were still at 10 So these were areas that had higher unemployment in the county as a whole. So there were probably Catholics in those parishes who felt less able to support the parish. Uh, Another thing that we saw is parishes that had a really high concentration of Hispanic uh, people in the zip code uh, saw their donations go down more. And what we think might be going on there is that in er those communities are probably a lot of the people who are going to the parish. So it may be that in those cases where you have a lot of people who are more recent immigrants, that uh, the people who are attending the parish are more vulnerable to unemployment than the population of that county as a whole. And so the county might look like its unemployment didn't go up that much, but for the people actually attending the parish, they could feel either harder hit or like they were a lot more likely to lose their jobs. So those were the two things from a data point of view. There was a little bit of a correlation also to sort of more rural areas but it wasn't something that we could prove statistically. That was going to be my follow-up question of the 15 parishes that did see increases um, and they were recovering faster. Where were they, where were they located? Are you saying they were, were they all in rural areas or no? No, they were not all in rural areas. We actually saw uh, one example was in New York city. uh, Surprising as that might seem. And we had, uh, we had some in other big city areas. Uh, New Orleans had several parishes that had gone up despite being right in the core of the city Uh, Miami had a couple of parishes that did well. So there were some big city parishes that did well, uh, and there were a number of rural parishes. So that didn't turn out to be a predictive factor. I'd say there was a slightly disproportionate number, but part of that is that our one diocese that did really well was Fargo and Sioux Falls. And so those two were pretty rural dioceses. How long do you think it's going to take for the economy to recover from this economic damage? So we've seen that for the country as a whole, unemployment is now down to 6%, which is, I mean, a a number that we thought of as being pretty good five or six years ago. Uh, It's not as low as it was going into the pandemic, but sort of the absolute numbers are well, but I think people are still feeling like the economy and the country as a whole is kind of in a tenuous place. So I think some of that is when do people think that things are coming back to normal as well as just what the numbers show. Brendan, Hodge now, Brendan is our what guest. would you say, because this is something that has affected, is continuing to affect um, so many families in our country and around the world. So many families are still struggling financially. What would you say to families who want to help the church um, recover from this economic devastation, but are kind of in a tight spot themselves? So I, I think parishes always talk about kind of the time, treasure, and talent aspects of this. And as parishes begin to reopen and try to resume normal activity, is one of the things that they're going to need most of all is people who can be actively involved, at, whether it's in liturgy, in charitable work, in the school, all the different things that are involved in a parish. And so I, I would hope that as we're coming back together as a physical community and spending time together face-to-face, that would be one of the things that would help people both 
recover a sense of community in the parish and also give in ways that are not strictly dollars. Brendan Hodge is our guest, and we're just about to wrap up here. The Pillar is his organization. The article is called The Pandemic and the Collection Plate, which we have linked to. Um, final thoughts, Brendan. Where do we go from here? How do we see 2021? Is uh, 2021 going to be more hopeful for these parishes? I think 2021 is a chance for things to to start over for a lot of people. I, I think that some parishes that stepped up and saw the chance to help people who are in need and, and increase their collections can continue down that path of serving the communities more. And other parishes are going to be seeking to get back to normal. I think all of us are going to be called to figure out how to get back to a more productive uh, community as we come out of this period where a lot of people have spent their time in isolation. All right. Brendan Hodge, thank you for your time this morning. We're very grateful to you. God love you. Thank you. All right. Happy Easter to you. Merry Christmas. And uh, I actually, I wanted to say Christmas. I don't even know why. <laughs> Happy Easter. There. Happy Easter. Have a great day. Christ is risen. I think I was starting down the litany of all uh, Christian holidays there for some odd reason. That's funny. <laughs> Brendan, God bless you. Have a great day. That is going to do it for the first hour of Catholic Drive Time. Uh, holiday litanies uh, aside, we have a great hour lined up for you next hour. If you are at all able to join us, we certainly would love to have you. You can find the links to our social streams on our website, GRN online.com forward slash cdt breaking news and stories saint of the day gospel of the day plus our fear and trembling game show is back this week with a new prize and you could win all you have to do is be the contestant all of the rules and information is posted to our website grnonline.com forward slash cdt plus an after show is coming up in the next hour as well and guess what? This whole week, we're going to have a whole a list of incredible guests for you. I'm very excited. So stick around. A ton of Catholic Drive Time is headed your way this week. If you're not able to join us in the next hour, we will see you back here bright and early, 6 a.m. Central, 7 Eastern, keeping you informed and inspired. Catholic Drive Time. We'll be right back. God love you and God bless you. Thank you for joining us on Your Catholic Drive Time where it is our pleasure to keep you informed and inspired. Join us Monday through Friday at the same time, right here on your favorite Catholic radio station. Don't forget to connect with us. Just go to facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Again, that's facebook.com forward slash Catholic Drive Time. Be sure to share more than just us today. Share Jesus with everyone you meet. Bye now, and God love you.